directed us to implement the revisions to 2 CFR for awards made on or after October 1st. This information came out in April. NSF implements 2 CFR in two ways, in the PAP guide and in our award terms and conditions. NSF is revising our grant general conditions for awards made on or after October 1st. Going to go into that in a moment. We anticipate a, we anticipate a, <clears throat> anticipate, Sam's, got, she's like shaking here. <laughs> we anticipate a late August publication with subsequent outreach. We know you need time to look at this and we are doing everything possible to give them to you so that you don't get them the day, October 1st, and say, how are we supposed to know what's even been changed? We will be modifying the PAP guide, 24-1. A header in each chapter beginning October 1st that lets you know if there is a discrepancy between what's in the PAP guide and what's in 2 CFR, 2 CFR governs. Because as I noted, PAP guide for 25 will not be coming out for some time. So more on this. Changes to um, uh, the NSA grant general conditions. Now you're going, wait a minute, they messed something, come on NSA. We, institutions of higher education, follow the research terms and conditions. No more. We simply were not given sufficient time to do an interagency. April to October, that's not time to do an interagency process. Last time we did it, we were right down to the wire, and I asked the other federal agencies what are you, in fact, I got an email yesterday, Gene, what are you, what are you putting out the research terms and conditions? Uh, you should have paid attention here. So when I asked them what they were doing, if we were going to be late, and NSF had a plan B, they said, Gene, you are our plan B. Gene cannot be the plan B for all of these agencies. So I am here to tell you, we are revising GC1, Grant General Conditions, to apply to all recipient types. IHEs, nonprofits, um, for profits, uh, state and local governments, tribal nations. Um, so it will be applied to any new award, grant, or cooperative agreement. Now, cooperative agreements have, co um, have financial, cooperative agreement, financial and administrative terms and conditions. If you receive a cooperative agreement, you will follow what we call CAFATC. Love the acronyms in DC. Um, I can speak a whole sentence without saying any words. So there are, in the research terms and conditions, there are two exhibits. We will continue to have exhibits. One that identifies the national policy requirements for recipients of NSF awards. Big shout out to our Office of the General Counsel for um, uh, updating that. And NSF prior approval matrix. Big shout out to Samantha Hunter and Beth Strauss who worked on that. We will have updates to terminology. And I've got a number of other things that I want to tell you about in September. So stay tuned. Jeremy's uh, organizing that right now as we speak.